Hi everybody, welcome inside the Lady Magazine, Britain's longest running women's weekly. I'm here with Georgia Tafalo, our editorial assistant, and I'm Katrina Schollenberger, and I do digital marketing here at the Lady. And we're here to give you a little inside look into our offices and our production and how the magazine works. I'm so excited. <laughs> So essentially, the lady is, has been known for its classified advertisements since 1885. So in any one week, we can have up to 500 ads in the lady. And it all happens here in classifieds and our display ads. Um, so essentially, our sales executives liaise with the advertisers, make it all happen, and then it goes to production, uh, who makes sure that the ads are legal, honest, truthful, and decent, and that they're not ageist or sexist or uh, any other ist, <laughs> and then uh, we get them in the mag, and it's one of the most important jobs, if not, you know, the most important job at the lady. Hello, I work in Classified, and here in Classified, we've been taking advertisements for the past 130 years, from right across the whole of society, from lords and ladies to members of the public. It could be advertising, looking for positions, or wanting people to employ. Uh, we also, as well, advertise fashion, jewellery, personals, animal charities, courses in tuition. For the person, they could be looking for love, they could be looking for friendship, or just travel companions, or perhaps people they haven't seen for a long time. Right, ready. Going down to the archive. Have you been down to the archive? No, never. It is so exciting Yay. and a little bit scary. <laughs> Great. But it is full of history and it's amazing. And everybody, please watch your step because the steps are like <laughs> really steep. So, this is. Oh my goodness. Like every issue since. The beginning of the I can't believe that I've been allowed in here. Wow. Oh my goodness. Katrina, look. I know. Oh, guys, I found 1898. <laughs> 1898. Well, it started in 1885, so this, these are like the very first issues. Oh my god. Yeah. So the lady was started by Th Thomas Gibson Bowles in 1885. Um, but in his second term of parliament, he handed it to a man called David Mitford, who was his son-in-law, um, who was the father of the Mitford sisters. Yeah, yeah, you know, the Mitford it, sisters. Yes, yeah. yes. The It Girls. Um, so essentially, um, David Mitford went to Burma, um, as a lot of men did at that time. And when he came back, he brought a pet mongoose with him. What a mongoose! And the mongoose lived in the basement and got rid of all the rats. Here? Yeah, here in the ladies. No the way. mongoose ran around. Wait, and... what was the mongoose called? So, I didn't have an official name, but we've nicknamed him Bullseye. After Bullseye? Mr. After Mr. Bulls, Bullseye. That's amazing! Yeah. So, from the very start of the lady, oh, look. Um, wow. we were always known for the advertisement, so it's pretty much all ads. Yeah. Um, so, that was the start. Oh wow, wow. Okay. Do you know, I love a cable knit jumper, and that is obviously why. Amazing, right? So when I was born, this they were, <laughs> you know, already wrapping the cable knit. Yeah. And I love Booth's hair too, so it's like, Whoa. Oh yeah. wow, that dress is so pretty. Well, yeah, we start, we, we were in ads for a long time, so... The so covers for ages were just pretty much ads. Yeah, until yeah. Until... The war period, the Great War period. So what happened to, during the war, the First World War? So there's a there was a myth in the lady. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> there was a myth that the lady never talked about war. Okay. Because it was kind of like a like an unladylike thing to discuss. But it was so much a part of everyone's lives that it's been just proven. So we did discuss the war. Okay. And moving on from the First World War to the Second World War. Because it was quite rare for a publication to carry on printing throughout a war, right? Right, no, but we haven't missed an issue since 1885. It's unbelievable. So, all through the wars, we've published every single week. I can see, I can yeah, see it right it's through. Just amazing. Wow. Um, so yeah, these are sort of the war periods. And also during the, the war, war period. During the war, both wars. Yeah. Um, was the office still here? Yes. It just carried on like more. Doesn't that show? If you're a real lady, keep calm, carry on. Yeah. Keep on printing. Yeah. I love that. Also, so we sacrificed a copy of every single issue and had it guillotined and scanned and it's also digitally um, archived. So you wow. can so you can search things online. Online, yeah. you can online, see yeah, all yeah, of them. all of the issues. It's pretty incredible. Wow. Um, 
I feel really bad. I don't think I can touch anything. Right. But um, just don't tell anyone. Look at that. It's so beautiful. It's a Christmas one. I shouldn't be allowed down here, you know? No. So we've never missed an issue, as I mentioned, from the beginning of The Lady in 1885. Um, but during Easter and Christmas and bank holidays, we do um, a one double a year at Easter and then two triple issues. So, so it's it's double the magazine in right, one. Yeah, see, okay. right. It's to alleviate the pressure of missing a day in the um, production schedule. Yeah. So yeah, this is a summer double. Um, it's from so beautiful. Look at that dress. Yeah, incredible. I want to just glide around in that dress always. <laughs> so you can see when the Second World War started, we kind of changed our stance from ads, and we were on the cutting edge of fashion, and we sort of became known as well for our fashion pages and um, more so than the adverts at that period. Not more so than the ad. I mean, we've always been known for our ads, yeah. but the pictures in here are just beautiful yeah and we actually take inspiration for a lot of our merchandise and tea towels and postcards and note cards from this mm. era um, Amazing. so you can purchase those <laughs> if you like <laughs> and so here we have the 90s and the 2000s and interestingly enough the editorial has always kind of played second fiddle to the advertisements as I mentioned the advertisements are really like the hub of the magazine yeah up, um, up until recently our former editor Matt Warren won an award um, for editor of the year yeah, because hasn't Sam been nominated for a British Society of Magazine Editors Award? Yep, she's shortlisted yes. now our current editor, Sam Taylor, so we hope she wins. Love her. Yes. <laughs> now we're in the subs room, which is an integral part of the editorial tapestry. Um, they do all the word checking, punctuation, grammar, fact checking. They make sure the sentences are in the right order. Um, that was a very, very important, very, very important <laughs> job in the editorial part. Um, and they just check everything. They are meticulous, so this is a very important room in the editorial. So now we've moved into the picture desk and the design room where they lay out the ma magazine and make it look beautiful and source the pictures and uh, do the cover and everything and just make it look beautiful for the readers. The lady has the best covers ever. Yes, the best. they do. So this is where the letters editor sits and also um, personal assistant to Sam. Um, and this is also where we choose pet of the week. And also, aren't you guys looking for pet of the year? We are. So get your entries in. Pet of the year and um, most talented pet of the year as well. So if your pet's got some talents, let us know. <laughs> So this is where I usually hang out. I do most of my writing there. Um, it's a really nice space, but right next to Sam, so you've got to behave. This is where the tea is made, mostly by me. Um, it's an integral part of life of the lady, and also much, much loved. <laughs> So now we're going to head into the Lady Recruits office and they're going to explain a little bit more about our recruitment division. There we go. Hello! Hi! Hi! So this is the Lady Recruits office. This is our lovely recruitment consultant, Victoria Senior, and Miss Amy Cosgrove over here and she's going to explain a little bit about what they do. Okay, um, so the lady's always been known as the place to find domestic staff, um, so housekeepers and nannies. So four years ago they decided to set up the lady recruits. Um, so now our clients have the choice to either put in their own advertisements or they can work closely with our consultants. Um, so we work really closely with our clients to really work out um, the perfect person for them. We have a really great relationship with our candidates and our clients. Um, so. Victoria and I work here in London, so we deal with London and International and in Norfolk we also have Sarah and Vanessa who deal with the rest of the UK. Um, so together we cater worldwide. So this is our Managing Director Helen who runs Hi. the day-to-day -day of the magazine and kind of oversees all the uh, different aspects and yeah, head 
And here we are in what is colloquially known as the boardroom um, of the lady. It's actually um, our publisher's office, uh, but uh, boardroom sounds a little bit um, posher, shall we say. <laughs> um, but, uh, and what I want to do now is to tell you a little bit about um, the history um, of the lady and some of the things that are in this room which um, form part of the, that history. Um, up here we have um, Thomas Gibson Bowles, who um, founded the lady in 1885. Um, he uh, was already a publisher when he started the lady, um, and he had started a, a magazine called Vanity Fair a few years earlier. Did you know that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I knew mean, that one. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so interesting. Yeah, yeah. A Vanity Fair in those days was very different to that which we know now. It was far more of a satirical really? um, title. Really? interesting. Yes, it was a bit like pri uh, Private Eye. And now it's gone space. so yeah. fashion-y. Yeah. yeah. So interesting. Because when we were down in the archives, we were going through and how, you know, at some point the lady was real, real high fashion. You yes. know? Some of the covers, yeah. I mean, it looked like real couture on the front. That's right. Fascinating. Yeah, and particularly around the start of the Second World War. That's exactly. Yeah. Regina was saying. Yes, yeah. Anyway, Thomas Gibson Bowles was um, a colourful character. Uh, not only was he a publisher, but also um, he was a barrister. And he's one of the few individuals to have successfully sued the Bank of England. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And wow. uh, possibly fueled by that success, I don't really know, but um, he thought that he'd probably make a decent parliamentarian. And uh, so he stood for Parliament and um, eventually became MP for Kings Lynn. But in those days, um, around the turn of uh, the 1900s, MPs didn't get um, the, the salaries that they do now, nor did okay. they enjoy the fabulous expenses that they do now. <laughs> and um, they had to be self-financing. So Thomas Gibson Bowles actually sold Vanity Fair to finance him um, becoming uh, an MP, and he kept the lady going. See. Yeah. When he took up his second term in office, he handed over day-to-day -day control um, of the lady to a gentleman by the name of David Mitford, who is up here. Oh, and that's two of the Mitford sisters. That's right. right. This is their dad. Okay. And uh, he had six daughters and one son who tragically died. But as you so rightly said, um, the Mitford sisters went on to become the It Girls of the 1920s and 30s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the day-to-day -day control of the lady then um, went on to George Stuart Bowles, um, who is our current publisher, um, Ben's um, grandfather. And he then passed uh, the control of the lady on to his son, Tom Bowles, who then um, looked after the lady for 50 years up until the end of 2008. Um, so can we expect a big portrait of Ben? <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine? Big, I think it needs to be yeah. a whole wall. No, I think, I think we should. Yeah. <laughs> see, what, see what we were saying about <laughs> that. Yes, yes, that would be funny. Um, just over in this corner, um, we have another piece of um, interesting um, furniture, which is that um, it is the chair in which um, a, a gentleman called Leslie Ward, who um, drew under the pseudonym of Spy, sometimes he, he um, drew under the pseudonym of Draw, D R A uh, W L, uh, but um, Spy created great caricatures which were then used um, throughout the pages of Vanity Fair because of course in those days they didn't have um, the access to photography that um, we do now. So um, to enhance the editorial they would um, have caricatures of, of, of people um, similar to this one which he, that this one over here um, which actually oh. is um, a spy caricature of Thomas <laughs> Gibson Bowles. Oh. And so oh, funny. funny. I love it. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. Okay. Thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Thank you.